All right, let's take a look at our first troubleshooting problem, and that is a reach-in cap tube system low on refrigerant. So what has happened to this system? It's normally operating at uh, 18 degrees evaporator temperature and 125 degree condensing temperature. But now, because of low refrigerant, the pressure has decreased in the system and the evaporator temperature has dropped to 10 degrees. And on the high side, also oh, let's take a look at this. So the system is undercharged and evaporation begins normally at the beginning part of the evaporator coil. And because the system is undercharged, at this point, all of the refrigerant has evaporated as fully changed state into vapor. And then through this entire part of the evaporator coil, there is no significant cooling happening because there's no changing of state. Let me erase this. When what would normally happen in a normal system, we would have the refrigerant changing state all the way down to the very end of the evaporator coil and then we would pick up superheat right here and that would be the normal operating but in this undercharge condition everything boils off up here and we have all of this evaporator coil in which to pick up superheat. So what happens is evaporation begins very early on in the coil, it's fully evaporated, and then we start to pick up superheat. So we start at, at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, then we pick up more superheat, more superheat, more superheat, until we get all the way down here to where we're measuring at the outlet, at the evaporator, and we have a 10 degree um, evaporator temperature with a 40 degree line set temperature, and we have 30 degrees of superheat, which is super, super high, very, very high. And because we don't have enough refrigerant, the box temperature raises to 50 and it won't go any lower. So one more time, we leave the cap tube, evaporation begins, we evaporate, 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 very early on in the evaporator coil, the refrigerant is fully evaporated, it is changed state completely. So only from here to here do we have any usable refrigeration. Then we begin to pick up superheat very early on in the evaporator coil. So it goes from 10 degrees to 20 degrees to 30 degrees to 40 degrees of, of uh, temperature. And we end up with 30 degrees Fahrenheit superheat. And because there's not enough refrigerant to maintain box temperature, the box temperature rises to 50. It won't go any lower no matter what they do. So they're telling you, hey, we've got our um, thermostat set as low as it'll go and the box temperature no, doesn't get above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now on the other flip side of the system, now that we have low pressure here um, because of lack of refrigerant, the pressure drops on the high side of the system. And because of that uh, lowered high side pressure, the condenser temperature is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And the outdoor air ambient temperature is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not going to reject any heat whatsoever. Um, it's not going to have any type of subcooling because the ambient temperature and the um, condenser temperature are the same. So it's not going to reject any amount of heat. So therefore, you're going to have very, very low subcooling, low subcooling, and you're going to have very, very high superheat with both the high side and low side pressures being low. And this is a classic, classic example of an undercharged system with a fixed metering device. Now, if you flip this around a little bit, so how do we know that they just didn't put hot product on there? The way that in the in the box, and the, that's what caused the box temperature to rise. But 
the way that you know that is because the subcooling of the system would be normal even if we had um, hot product in the box. So it's that low subcooling and low pressures that are your key to the undercharge system and also being able to visualize what's happening and understanding what's happening within the refrigeration uh, system itself.